Hello there, Delight Channel. Welcome to this week's episode of Entrepreneurship Made Simple. We are an NGO with a vision of world transformation, one man at a time, one community at a time. And this week, it's a question we want to ask as usual. What are the roads that lead to entrepreneurship? If you've been with us since the beginning of this series, we've tried to connect asset creation to entrepreneurship. We've defined it and we have tried to help you see what is the DNA for entrepreneurs so that you can check whether you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. But usually entrepreneurship do not just happen. There are certain events and circumstances that facilitate entrepreneurship. And broadly speaking, there are just two of them. The first is as a result of opportunities that exist. So what we are saying there is that if you are an entrepreneur or somebody with an entrepreneurial spirit, everywhere you go, all you see are opportunities. Opportunities for solving problems, opportunities for making a difference, opportunity for turning things around, opportunities for improving things. It is this kind of um, event or circumstance that makes entrepreneurs to switch gear, take the bold step, take risk like we have said, take the necessary step and see whether they can profitably exploit that opportunity. And this quickly brings to mind the story of Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba. Um, for many years before now, Amazon has been doing a great job of e-commerce in the United States. But as a result of culture, language, market restrictions, it has not been able to really penetrate the Chinese market. Jack Ma, an entrepreneur who didn't even study anything that has to do with technology or computer science, saw that opportunity. And if you remember what we said in the last video, he was able to assemble a team that would buy into that vision, follow his leadership, he was able to infect them with his passion, and today what we have is Alibaba. Watch this short video. I didn't have a rich father tried three times for university, all failed. I applied for Harvard for 10 times, all failed, they don't even want to see me. For the last time, I went to the teacher's college, which was considered the third or fourth class of my city. My pay was $10 a month, because I could not find a good job in 1994 discussed that I'm going to do something called internet and 23 of them against it they said this is a stupid idea we have never heard about internet and you know nothing about computer and I never thought I was smart nobody believed that I could be successful because everybody said well this guy think differently think crazily you know they think about something that never work I tried to borrow 3,000 US dollars from the banks it took me three months but I still cannot get it we talked to over 30 or 40 venture capitalists, everybody said, no, forget it. A lot of people said, Alibaba is a terrible model. As I said, I believe it. I think this thing could be big. I never thought it would be that big like today. But I believe that something, something is waiting for me there. And I have to work hard to prove myself. That was the tough experience. So we gather 50,000 US dollars from 18 founders. We started. For the first three years, we did not have even one dollar revenue from our business. It was not easy. Why it keeps us going ahead, going forward? Because I received lots of email of thanks from the customer. They say, this is such a great thing. We cannot pay you, but this thing helped us. If you keep on helping us, one day you will be successful. And I believe this. Little by little, we build up our business. Little by little, we build up our ecosystem of the infrastructure. And now after 16 years, we have an Alibaba group, we have a Tmall group, we have a Taobao group, we have an Alipay. And people said, 
You are so smart. How could you make a company like that? So, that is road one. Road number two that can lead you to entrepreneurship is as a result of necessity. Either because it is time for you to retire or some of you have just found yourself without a job. As an example, I am a very reluctant entrepreneur. I wasn't thinking of entrepreneurship when I found myself in it. The career journey wasn't going the way I really wanted it to go. I certainly believe that I could do more than I was doing just staying 8 to 5 in an, in, in an office. But I really wasn't ready for it when it happened. But when I realized that I was no longer getting the kick out of what I was doing, I decided to take the uh, to bite the bullet and go the entrepreneurship road. And the rest, they say, is history. Almost 10 years now and counting. And the same happens to many people. They find themselves all of a sudden out of job. They find themselves all of a sudden at the end of employment. And they're wondering, what do I do next? How do I proceed? It really doesn't matter how you find yourself in entrepreneurship. The point is, if you are deciding to follow that track, number one, you need to do the DNA test that we said last week. And what you find should guide you on how to proceed. And the second is that, if you have then decided that, look, whether it is because of the opportunity that you have identified or because of the necessity that you have to confront, the next question then is, how do I make the best of this challenge that is standing in front of me? And that leads me to the very next thing, which is something I referred to twice already in this series. And what am I talking about? I'm saying that at the heart of it, at the very essence, at the very core of entrepreneurship is problem solving. The bigger the problem you are able to identify, the bigger the value you are able to create. And the bigger the value you are able to create, the, val the bigger the value you are able to appropriate to yourself. So. If we go back again to that fundamental that says entrepreneurship is about problem solving, the next question is, once you have now decided to travel on that road, what do you need to do next? Which problem are you trying to solve? How big is that problem? What resource capacity currently resides in you? What resource do you require to make it happen? Unfortunately, because of time, I am not able to get into the specifics of this this week. If you are as excited as I am getting with this conversation, I, I invite you to please make it a date with me next week as we then go into these details. But before then, there is a Telegram channel where we can actually bring this alive by having active engagement. This is something that touches a lot of people because either because they're either they are worried about where they're going or they have a problem on hand that they need to solve. So don't just keep quiet about it. This is completely free. Join the Telegram channel, raise your questions. Whatever it is, even if we are not yet there at the level of this video, we will address it for you and help you on your journey. It's a very exciting series that we are having. I invite you to please show us some love online. Give us a comment. Give us a like. Help us to share. These are the things that help us to know that we are making a difference to you out there. I'm making the date next week, like I said, as I get deeper into the conversation of how do you really go about becoming an entrepreneur? You will be glad you did. Once again, Timak is my name. It's a pleasure to have had you here this week. And whatever you do, please don't ever, ever forget that all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. See you next week and bye. Ciao.